sensorious bug. Hamas butchered and tortured and raped and kidnapped 1,400, 1,500 Jews with an emphasis on women and children and even babies. And that attack on civilians was the cause for celebration and rallies. Think about that. And let me bring it back to the Nazi example. Imagine if, when the truth about the concentration camps was discovered, if around the world there had been triumphant rallies celebrating the murder and torture of Jews, calling for more, supporting the Nazi cruelty, calling for the eradication of any remaining Jews, and not just calling for it, actually doing it where they can, like here, uh, in an attack on a synagogue in Tunisia yesterday. You don't have to go that far away. Here's an attack targeting a rabbi in Vancouver or threats against Jewish school children in Toronto. I have seen no government MP, certainly not Trudeau, condemn those hate rallies, have you? They were so embarrassed by a 98-year-old Nazi, but they're silent in the face of a 28-year-old Nazi. Listen to this young woman and look at her earrings. Hamas is not a terrorist group. Oh, it isn't, ma'am. First of all, Hamas is not okay. a terrorist group. Okay, I'm, 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 Hamas is well, not a terrorist group. What is it, like a motorcycle it club? Or? It is a resistance that has been fuming for 75 years of colonialism, of occupation, of murder, of rape, of little children, of women. That's what they are. They are resistance. Do you think Canada is everything, a colonialist country too? Or? Everything that they do is justified. Yes, yeah, swap out the Arabic script on her shirt for German lettering. G give her a German accent. Give her a swastika. But, but have her say the exact same words about the Jews. But make it Jews murdered in Europe rather than Jews murdered in Israel. Like, don't change anything she says. Just change who she is and then multiply that by 10,000 times across the country. We have a Nazi problem on our hands. Why are the powers that be silent? Not a single human rights commissioner in this country is speaking out, let alone investigating or prosecuting. You know, I saw, I don't know if you saw this, the Saskatchewan human rights commissioner resigned the other day in a huff over Premier Scott Moe bringing in parental rights laws to give parents a heads up if their young kids start to transition their gender in schools. So that's enough to move the human rights commissioner to resign. But none have issued even a press release about the hate celebrations across Canada. Not a word, not a peep from the Canadian Race Relations Foundation. Not one word. They're run by a pro-Hamas Islamist. Not a peep from the so-called anti-hate network. They're pro-Hamas as well. Just nothing from the official good people. Why? Huh. Well, it gets so much worse. Look at this. This is dug up by citizen journalists, certainly not anyone at the CBC. CBC aren't allowed to dig this sort of thing up. They're not even allowed to call Hamas terrorists. Let me show you some info that I found uh, from this Twitter citizen journalist. Will Ikra Khalid and Omar al Gabra, those are two Trudeau MPs, commit to stop meeting with those who praise the slaughter of Canadian Jewish civilians. They have previously met with Rashad Saleh, Abu Samir, one of the founders of Palestine House, and Nabil Nasser. Okay, let me take you through some more of their tweets. On October 7, during the massacres, Saleh says, there is no doubt that what has occurred today on the Israeli-Palestinian front has gladdened the sons of Palestine in the land and in the diaspora without exception. Our strength and dignity has returned to us, really. So massacring children and torturing women and raping them has returned your dignity to you, really. They're thrilled about the massacre, but they warned about being too public about it, in English at least. Here's the next tweet from these folks urging caution on joining public celebrations. Quote, the other point is that it was announced on social media, and this is very dangerous because everything is translated immediately. And if the other side, the Zionists, want to create a problem, this is a great opportunity. So they're all thrilled with the massacre, but they're saying, don't put it in writing, folks. Some of the more excitable bigots want to go full pogrom, but the smarter ones warn against it for now. I'll read the next tweet. His followers get angry at him. Wow, wow. Why this tendency to refuse to join? Are you against this operation? He reassures them. I tell you that I am very happy with what happened and is happening. 
And then here's the next one. This is good research by citizen journalists. You don't have to pay $1.5 billion to, unlike the CBC. Another community member says, we are overjoyed by the killing of every Zionist. But in this country, Canada, we cannot express our emotions honestly. Necessity creates prohibitions. Oh, okay. Look at the photos here. I don't know if you can see the one with Omar Al-Gabra and Elizabeth May of the Green Party on there. They're, they're not just meeting with people who want a Palestinian state. You know, that's, that's a political debate. They're meeting with people who want to murder the Jews, who celebrate the murder of Jews, who are thrilled by it, whose hearts are gladdened by it. They're meeting with the young version of Yaroslav Hunka. Why the double standard, I ask again? Well, Here's a clue. Remember I told you once about the town of Rotherham, the city, Rotherham in the United Kingdom? About a quarter million people in Rotherham proper. And 1,400 or actually more of the women in that city have been raped, minimum. It's probably double that. So quarter million people, 125,000 women in this city altogether, and 1,400 have been raped. Almost every family would know a rape victim. How? Who? How did it happen? And by the way, they, they weren't just raped once. They were raped again and again, night after night, girls as young as 11 years old, targeting girls that age, taken to what were called rape rooms where men would take turns raping them. How? How did this go on for years, by the way? It happened because the 1,400 girls were working-class white girls, poor. And the rapists were almost all Pakistani Muslims. Here's Majid Nawaz, a Pakistani Muslim, pointing out how that just made everyone shut up about it. Social workers, nurses, police, the media, everyone was too afraid to talk about it because they were Pakistani Muslims doing the raping. Listen to Majid. For too long in this country, uh, we... Media, the establishment, society, the chattering classes, the liberal elite, whatever term you want to use, have ignored the issue of grooming gangs, of young, vulnerable teenage girls who have been uh, victimized, drugged and raped and abused. Whether it's the Rotherham case or all the other cases that were replicated across the country, uh, it is both the conclusion of the prosecutor uh, in the Rotherham case, British Pakistani Muslim Nazir Afzal, or indeed the official inquiry into why it took so long for these young, vulnerable, underage girls uh, to get justice. Uh, both of those concluded that fears of racism prevented us from coming to the defence of vulnerable, underage girls. Fears of racism meaning... Uh, that the state was scared that it would be accused of being racist if it rightly arrested and prosecuted British Pakistani, largely British Pakistani Muslim men, uh, in their abuse of underage white teenage girls. And so from fear of appearing racist, there was a silence across the country as multiple cases of grooming gangs emerged up and down the country, as evidenced now due to multiple uh, uh, prosecutions, successful prosecutions, but sadly and unfortunately too late. If we hadn't all been silent, if we had all addressed this issue head on when it needed to be addressed, when it was time to address it, then the void would not have emerged for the populist agitators to fill that gap and become popular, actually, as a result of addressing what is a legitimate issue. They ended up hijacking what should have been the concern of every right-minded citizen in this country. And unfortunately, it takes a bit of courage to address something uh, that people will hurl abuse at you for talking about. I know on this show, on, this, on my own show on the weekends, um, I've tried to book... Uh, certain MPs to come on and address the issue of grooming gangs and on multiple times they've had to back away from fear of the backlash. We recall Sarah Champion, who in the Labour Party attempted to address this and lost her position in the front bench as a result. 
There have been multiple cases now, and it's beyond any level of doubt that there's a disproportionate number of British Muslims involved in grooming gangs against underage white girls. And to say that is to, say, is to report on the facts. Uh, it's not to be racist. And if, if we're backing away from this conversation, then all we're doing is, is, is leaving the ground far open in what is a legitimate issue that requires addressing, we're leaving the ground for the populists to hijack that legitimate issue and make it their own for their own nefarious purposes. And that's precisely what's been going on. And it's in, it's, it's in that regard that what I'm saying here is I just wish, I wish that those young girls had seen justice served for them as fast as the judge served Tommy Robinson justice in this case. Because in this case, it's very easy for us to pick on the bogeyman. But actually, the truth is that our silence over decades in this country is the real bogeyman. And that's the real thing we should despise, our own cowardice in the face of grooming of young girls up and down this country and our conspiracy of silence. There are other rape gangs across the UK and they exist for the same reason. People are afraid to condemn them because they're worried they'll be called racist. Not rapist, racist. Apparently racism is worth, worse than rape. There was an official commission of inquiry into these mass rapes in Rotherham 10 years after they were around. You can, you can find the commission report online very quickly. Just Google Rotherham Rape Commission. Then open that document and do a, do a word search. Do you know what I mean? Just search for the word racism or racist. You'll find again and again people in authority saying they didn't dare speak out about this mass rape of 1,400 girls because they didn't want to be called racist. Which brings us back to Canada. We are witnessing in Israel a wave of Stone Age violence and barbarity not seen since the Nazis, but actually worse, because Hitler hid the worst of his cruelty, knowing that not even ordinary Germans would countenance that. But the Hamas terrorists brazenly displayed their cruelty. They live streamed it. Even now, they officially publish their hostage videos. They want the world to know. In that way, they're, they're even more diabolical than the Nazis. And we have wave after wave of sympathizers for these new Nazis in the West, on campuses, in the media, in political parties, even in the police. Show me an arrest in Canada for anyone supporting the criminal terrorist organization Hamas, even though Hamas is on the list of illegal terrorist groups under the law. And thus it is illegal under the criminal code to participate, facilitate, instruct, or harbor the terrorist group in any way. Don't tell me we haven't seen participation and facilitation of terrorist groups. They've been flying their damn flags. Not one arrest. Some people say, Ezra, stop talking so much about Israel. What about Canada? Well, everything I've just said is about Canada. We have tens of thousands of Nazi supporters in Canada, not just Yaroslav Hanko, who's 98. I'm talking about today in our schools, our universities, our institutions, even in our parliament. And they just speak Arabic or Farsi now. They're not speaking German now. And they're 18 or 28, not 98 years old. My whole monologue today, it is about Canada and the place we have become and the place we are going. Doesn't that worry you as a Canadian? Canadian.